Howdy. My name is Nick, and I'm a pastor of youth and family ministry here at Faith. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you for joining us for worship online. Whether you're using the live stream and worshiping with us on Sunday morning, or maybe you're watching in the replays throughout the week, or maybe you're on YouTube and you're, you're listening and watching one of our messages. Thank you for being the church. Thank you for being connected here at Faith. And I would just like to encourage you that if you feel moved by this act of worship, that you consider engaging with us more, sharing your thoughts during the live stream in the chat, or reaching out to us through our many social media platforms that we are a part of. We are the church together, and we are so much better together than we could ever be apart. So let's, let's build these relationships that matter. So as you enjoy this time of meaningful worship, I just want to extend that special welcome to those who are new with us and let you know that here at Faith, everyone belongs and relationships truly matter. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So we are currently about a quarter of the way through of our summer sermon series called Summer Trippin'. And I was actually on a trip just this weekend. I got the privilege and pleasure of getting to go out to Lubbock, Texas. You know, they laughed at the first service too. That's so funny. I now know why. I also made the mistake of driving. That is 10 hours of my life that I will never get back. I got to go out for a change of command for the Army, and it was, it was a lot of fun, and it was a blast. And if, if you have no idea where Lubbock, Texas is, if you're joining us online, or if you if you're even don't even live in the state of Texas, let me just kind of paint the picture. It's kind of like the drive there and in Lubbock uh, gives off Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner vibes, right? Like that's just kind of picture, picture that. And so that was the trip that I was just on, but... But this summer, we're going to be looking at trips in the Bible. We're going to be looking at heroes of the faith and the ways in which we can glean not only how to live a better life, but how we can help to bring about God's kingdom right here on earth. And so this morning, the miracle, the parting of the Red Sea, this is my favorite miracle growing up. And it's all because of the cult classic 1998 hit movie, The Prince of Egypt. Have you all seen this one before? Okay, so I actually did, I loved this as a kid, but I actually did a little research on it. So just so we can paint the picture of how amazing this movie is, you should see the cast in this movie. I mean, they had Sandra Bullock, Steve Martin, they had Val Kilmer, they had Patrick Stewart, they had Martin Short. But then also it gets even better because they had a Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey collaboration in this movie. Now, I was like seven when this came out, so I didn't know any of that stuff. But the reason I loved it so much was for this clip right here. This movie really made this Bible story come alive for me as a kid. And, and my favorite part was right there at the end as the, the lightning strikes and you see these huge fish. And as a little kid, I loved fishing and I loved the sea. And I just thought this was the coolest thing ever. Now you want to see the movie, right? Yes, as an adult, though, I also love the story of the Exodus. 
It's really a beautiful story, this understanding that we are to put our utter and complete dependence on God, a God who is always faithful, a God who will never forsake us, who will always help to see our way through problems that we face. And yet, at the same time, we are so quick in our lives to forget that, to turn away from God, to forget that God is always with us. And so this, this Exodus story will be one of the stories that we'll probably see a couple more times throughout this sermon series. But today we are looking specifically at the parting of the Red Sea. So last week, Pastor Rusty was talking about this idea of the journeys we don't want to take. Well, today I want to look at some uh, examples of the understanding of journeys that we do want to take, but in the midst of them we get stopped. Okay, and so this is this uh, message today is actually inspired by my wife Morgan uh, See a couple of weeks ago. She was supposed to go up to Cleveland, Ohio for a wedding celebration Her her grandma was supposed to meet our daughter Emerson. She's 90 years old This is gonna be a big greeting and meeting of her great-granddaughter, right? And so I took Morgan and Emerson to the airport and I made their made sure they made it through security And then about an hour later she texts me we're delayed And then a little bit later we're delayed again. And about five more times, we're delayed, we're delayed, we're delayed. It eventually got to be 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night, and I went back and I picked up Morgan and Emerson. And about an hour after that, they finally canceled the flight. And so they never made it. But Morgan was in the airport with a six-month-old for like eight hours. I take it that means you have experience with newborns, right? Like... There were people in the airport calling her like a rock star. Like, they couldn't believe that she was waiting it out all day. And, you know, this was like Morgan and I's first uh, uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day. And, and it makes sense. So at Mother's Day, Morgan got, like, beautiful flowers and these pretty cards. And, you know, one of the cards said, you know, you know, mothers are like hair ties. They hold it all together, right? And then for Father's Day, you know, what, is, what does Dad get? Dad gets the card with, a, you know, a picture of a football player on it. And it says, dads are like backup quarterbacks, Every team needs one, but everyone's a little bit nervous when they go in, right? But no, she was, she was a hero, and I, I probably could not have been able to, to do that myself. But she inspired this message because this idea that in life there are going to be times where we are on a mission. We have a plan. We have the map laid out for us, and yet someone or something stops us or prevents us. And so in our our reading this morning, we see the, the exodus, the Israelites fleeing Egypt. The Israelites had been enslaved for some 400 years, and now Moses is leading them out. This comes after, you know, the idea we, they had the plagues, and Pharaoh still said no. And then the night before they left, they celebrated the Passover meal, right? The Passover meal that we talk a lot about during Holy Week leading up to Easter. That was that meal that Jesus shared with his friends before he was betrayed. And for us, as Jesus followers, that night we remember that he instilled in us a new commandment, to love one another as he has loved us. But more than that, that meal then becomes a remembering for us today. That when we gather around his table for communion, we remember and confess his story until he comes again, where one day we will all sit at his heavenly banquet feast and celebrate together the coming kingdom. And so... Right now in the story, the Israelites are fleeing, and the Egyptian army is behind them. And what is stopping them in front of them is the Red Sea. Having faith in God does not mean that our, our, our problems are removed, right? And so this morning, the, the main point, the focal point for this message, what I want to talk about is this idea that, that God did not part the Red Sea. God did not remove the Red Sea, but God parted the Red Sea. That God doesn't always remove our problems, but he will always make a way to get through them. And so that's what I'd like to talk about and unpack this morning. This idea that as Jesus followers, we're, we don't get some get-out-of-jail-free card or some hall pass. In fact, it's just the opposite. Being a Jesus follower is going to be hard. Following Jesus will be hard. And yet, in the midst of our problems, in the midst of our struggles and our daily life, we're able to come together for worship, right? We're able to come together and be reminded of who God calls us to be and who God says that we are, that we are beloved children of God, that we are made in God's image. 
that because of Christ's sacrifice, his death and resurrection, we are called to be resurrected people, forever changed people. And so that when we have these problems in our lives, we are to move forward in faithfulness. We are able to move forward because of God's grace and God's mercy. And so this idea of these times in your life where you get stopped, and because it's the Red Sea, I was reminded of a fun children's game, right? Does everyone remember Red Light, Green Light? Yeah? This is a fun game I played in Sunday school growing up or, or in gym class. This idea that there would be somebody like a traffic cop or a police officer, and they would turn around and they'd say, green light, and then you'd have to run forward trying to, to tag them or pass them. But when they turn back around and yell, red light, what did you have to do? Freeze, stop. And then what would happen if they said you didn't stop when they said red light? You had to go all the way back to the beginning. It's a pretty good metaphor for, for life in some ways, isn't it? You know, there will be times where we are just on this path, we are on this mission, whether it's you wanting to go to school or, or further your education, or maybe you want to advance your career, and then someone or something makes it all come to a crashing halt. I think in life, the idea of uh, some red lights that we might face is this idea of what society perpetuates for us, this idea that we live in a culture where, you know, Technology and information is at our fingertips. And this idea that we have Amazon two-day shipping and so that we want everything right now. This idea of instant gratification or instant satisfaction. And, but that's not how life goes. Especially for our walk of faith. Like, it's wonderful when people are new to the faith, are new to following Jesus, and they get all inspired and all motivated, but then maybe something bad happens or maybe something goes awry and they just lose it, right? This idea that our walk of faith is meant to be a lifelong journey. We don't have all the answers right up front. I wish we did, but we don't. It's about journeying together. It's about growing in that relationship. And it's something we do over the course of our life. But I think societally speaking, a good example of that is, you know, maybe not you, but me growing up, I wanted to lose weight or I wanted to, you know, have a fitness journey, right? And you usually do this when? At the beginning of the year. Right? You make that New Year's resolution. And so that first week of January, you eat really good. And you go work out a couple times, and you're really sore and tired. And then you weigh yourself, and you gained a pound. Right? And then what do you do? You, you stop. Or similar, similarly in ministry, you know, people get so inspired when they go out and serve. Or they go out and you know, help feed college students. And so they want to get involved in young adult ministry. But then really quickly a problem comes up. Something stops them. Doing ministry is hard, but it is always worth it. And when we have those problems in life, we have to be able to remember that our God will see us through it. That more than that, that more than that, the understanding that you are never stronger than when you depend on God. The enemy wants us to run away from God when things get hard. The devil wants us to turn away from God because when we do, we become vulnerable. We are stronger together, and that starts with our relationship with God. The psalmists remind us in Psalm 62, verse 8, Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. The beautiful and wonderful thing about our God is that our God wants us to present our difficulties and the things that are weighing us down. And that means, my friends, it is once again your weekly reminder to da da da, -da pray, right? I know we talk about this all the time, but it's so, so important. It's so important. And you see, your, your problems can often feel so overwhelming in part because we give our problems too much power. Now, I don't know about other preachers or how they do things, but for me, I usually like to run things by Morgan, and she'll usually, she'll, she'll tell it to me straight, right? You know, if I'm, I'll ask her, am I being too nerdy here? Like, are people going to understand this? Is this, is this going to make sense? And she'll always tell it to me straight. I mean, the, ever since the first time we went to church together, you know, I'm, I'm not a good singer, but I sang the gathering hymn, and we, we sat back down afterwards, and she leaned over and said, you shouldn't sing. And I said, you're right, dear. 
and it's been a beautiful relationship ever since. <laughs> but she'll tell it to me straight. And when I got to this part, she said, you know, you, you need to say that again because that's really important for people to hear today. So my wife is always right, so I will say it again. Your problems can often feel so overwhelming in part because we give our problems too much power. This is called catastrophizing or, or digging a hole. An example of this might be uh, you get into a fender bender on your way to work. You get into a fender bender, that means you're going to be late to work. If you're late to work, that means you're going to get written up. If you get written up, then you're, you're going to get fired. If you get fired, you're not going to be able to pay the rent. If you can't pay the rent, you're not going to have a place to live. If you don't have a place to live, you're going to be homeless. You see how that spiraled out really, really fast? That's the idea of digging a hole, catastrophizing. When we turn our attention away from God and towards our problems, we are amplifying the power of our problems. When we present our problems to God, we are taking pause and standing firm as our reading lifts up this morning in verse 13. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. That's true today, too. I, I hope you believe that. I hope you know that. We sang a song about the truth, right? And his name is Jesus. Our God does not change. Our God will deliver us, even in the midst of problems, even in the midst of things that might seem impossible. And y'all, the parting of the Red Sea seemed impossible. But for our God, nothing is impossible. The best way to lay your problems down is to bring them to God in prayer. When we do this, we unburden ourselves and open our heart to God. And when we do that, we are reminded that our God is our rock and our refuge, an ever-present and always faithful God who might not remove your problems, but will always help us to get through them. This is part of why prayer is so powerful. This one simple act of taking time to stand firm helps us not only spiritually, but also psychologically. You know, in the midst of, of that spiraling, in the midst of giving your problems more power, when you stand firm, when you take a moment to redirect, reorient yourself to God, the power from your problems is being shifted and given back to God, who will always see us through our problems. We're able to reorient. We're able to control and direct the way in which we want to go. Now, as I get ready to, to land this plane, any week that I get to share a meme with y'all is always eventful, but when I get to share one about my favorite book series, Harry Potter, it's always just a little bit special. Can we show the meme, Jerry? Them. So are you still going to pray to this God even though God doesn't remove your problems for you? Always. Always come back to prayer. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter how chaotic, how deep of a hole you might be digging yourself, stand firm. Pause. And give up your burdens to our God. Keep praying. Because God might not remove your problems, but God will always help to see you through them. As we reflect on the miraculous crossing of the Red Sea, let us remember that, that God didn't remove the obstacle. He made a way through it. When we face our own Red Seas, we can trust that God will provide a path, even if it seems impossible. Our strength is found in our dependence on him. For it is in our moments of stillness and trust that his power shines brightest. May we move forward with faith, knowing that the Lord fights for us and leads us through every challenge. Will you pray with me? Almighty God and gracious Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the opportunity to gather and worship, to reorient and to direct our hearts back to you, the one who is always faithful, the one who will see us through any and every problem. For nothing is impossible for you, dear God. At times, we, we want to put our trust solely in ourselves to see us through our problems, but you long for us to come to you to open our hearts and lay bare our problems before you, knowing that you will lift us up, that you will help to carry our burden, 
that you are always with us and always for us. So this summer, dear God, I ask that you you help us to travel, you help us to enjoy this summer vacations and trips that we have planned, and that you help us to make it there safely, and that any problems that we might face, dear God, help us to turn back to you in prayer, to take pause and stand firm in your name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.